Hi, everyone. I thank you for coming to our presentation today. Um, it is on the challenges faced by the sandwich generation, um, solo caregivers, and um, solo agers. Okay, so um, I am, my name is Carla Nazaro. I am part of a wonderful group called Senior Resource Council of Greater Boston. And some of our members are here, which we're going to um, introduce everybody. But we feel like we have a really unique, um, a really unique group um, that can help to serve our senior population. Um, Rich is going to get into that in a little bit. Um, if I could ask, what brought people to come here today, and what are you hoping to get from the presentation? If anybody would like to share, I'd love to hear it. So you are a caregiver to a spouse. Okay, so that's one of the groupings of people we're gonna hit today. Anybody else? We would classify you as a caregiver, right? And we would classify your friend as a solo ager, right? So we're just gonna define some of the, the people we're going to, um, we're gonna talk about today. Anybody else? So you definitely are a caregiver. Um, and we're gonna talk about um, caregivers as well and the burnout factor and the depression factor and the loneliness factor and, and all of that kind of rolled up into one. Sure. <laughs> sure. I was here for another appointment and exercise um, and my husband used to come but he's not interested anymore. He has mild dementia. Um, we're not needing any of these services yet, but it's good to know what's going on. Thank you for sharing. We're going to talk about creating a plan and not being caught um, in an emergency type of situation because it's better to have a plan. And though when life happens, it is easier to overcome um, those obstacles that come up. So just understanding what your resources are are helpful. Uh, my name's Karen. I also work out here. Um, and my husband's been sick, suffering from depression for four years. And I thought I was coming to seminar caring for yourself. Da, 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 da. And so I'm looking for resources for me as well as for him. Um, he's getting care. He's He just won't move. Um, he sleeps all day and he won't get out of bed. So you just mentioned something about coming to our house. I'd really be interested in hearing about that people fit at home and, and what we do for people at home as well. So I'm interested because I do work in the field and I do people fit at home. I'm a physical therapy assistant and having whatever resources I can provide to our clients, to their caregivers, be them family members, or some of them have paid caregivers in their homes um, or they're in their, in their environments. And I just want to make sure I know what re resources are out there to share with them. And Joanne, like I said, is a physical therapy assistant among having other titles. And she goes into people's homes and works with them. Um, she is one of those people you want working with your loved one because she gets results. She's the master of motivation and she can get people to do things that they may not want to do in, in a very appropriate and, um, and loving way. So um, thank you for sharing everyone. If I could just quick for my SRC colleagues, just if you could introduce yourself, say your name um, and you know what your title is and, and your company. Hi everybody, I'm uh, Rich Wallner. I'm a financial advisor and Carla and I started this group in 2011 actually. Earlier than that, but we started in 2011 with a focus totally on solo wagers, sandwich generation professionals and caretakers. And I'm Debbie Aminsade. I'm a senior real estate specialist, which is a special certification um, by the National Association of Realtors, um, focused on people downsizing or really work as an extension of the family, um, going beyond just your traditional marketing and selling of the home. So, yes. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Holly Blum, and um, I'm a geriatric care manager. I work with Northeast Care Management. And I'm an occupational therapy assistant, as well as a social worker. So I'm looking forward to, to being here today. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, my name is Diane Robinson and I represent the senior living category. So I'm here to help answer questions about independent living, assisted living and memory care programs. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Trisha Gordon and I represent the home care piece. So I have a company that um, helps people stay in their homes for as long as they can safely. So it's non-medical home care, private pay, and also it's uh, skilled um, nursing private pay. I'm a certified senior advisor, I'm a certified dementia practitioner, and I'm studying to be an end of life doula. So I hope if you have any questions about any of that, please ask me. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Patsios. My business is called Sorted Out Boston. It is a uh, home organizing and move management business. So I'm a certified senior move manager, helping people to do the decluttering and the downsizing when they are ready to make a move into a senior living community or other residents. Um, just overseeing the whole project. So I absorb the stress so that you don't have to and help make a smooth transition into your new residence. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Gina DiStefano and I, the name of my company is The Daily Money Manager. I help people from all walks of life manage their everyday finances, like paying their bills, checking their bank statements, uh, helping them with everything financial. Great. Okay, well, we'll start the presentation. So, um, Along with me, Debbie's gonna present and, and Rich will present as well. But um, let, let's start with um, defining caregiving, okay? Um, caregivers come in all walks of life with all different demographics. They're adults who care for their aging children, for their children, for their aging parents, um, grandparents, grandchildren, um, we are going to, as I mentioned before, talk about three different categories of caregiving. And um, for the purposes of our time today, we're going to talk about any non-professional caregiver um, who provides senior care, right? So it's estimated that at one point in, in time for, in our lives, 25% of us will be a caregiver to someone, right? And um, even though people come from different backgrounds and offer different types of care, your struggles and your worries and your process is really all the same, okay? So next one, please. Okay. And, and I will say that we were very thoughtful in putting this presentation together. We wanted to make sure we, you know, our, our original focus was the sandwich generation, but we also, we know, and I know from people fit that um, we have people who are caregivers to their spouses, right? And, and uh, a senior taking care of a senior presents its own sort of problems, right? Um, and and a, a, a person who's a sandwich generation professional who has the pressures of family and providing for family and then having the pr pressures of um, providing for parents. Um, it, it, it's very, it's a unique position and it's a, very stressful position too. Three different types, of uh, three responsibilities of the sandwich generation professional. Um, they take, they are responsible for the health and well-being of their aging parents or grandparents. They take responsibility for raising their families and providing for um, their families, their spouse, their children. And um, the sandwich generation professional has a job too most of them. And they're not only trying to stay in their job, they're trying to excel in their career, which presents a whole new set of problems. Right? Um, so um, by the numbers, we're gonna define sandwich generation professionals. They're typically adults in their 40s or 50s. Um, those are the people who are sandwich generation professionals who are surrounded by different generations, right? 54% um, of sandwich generation caregivers take care of a parent that is 65 or older in addition to their own children. The average caregiver 
is a 49 year old woman, average caregiver. But we know from even people at PeopleFit, our clients here, that we have 70 year olds here who are taking care of their 90 year old parents. We have 80 year olds who are caregivers for their grandchildren. So it's, it's not just the 40 and 50 year olds, it's the 40, 50, 60, 70 and 80 year olds at times. So there's a lot of pressure, right? <laughs> amongst all those different generations. Um, sandwich generations professionals are the most stressed out group of people. I'm just going to say it because um, I believe it. Solo agers, and we talked about um, some people who are solo agers. Three characteristics. They are, there are 15 million solo agers in the U.S. Um, defining them, <clears throat> excuse me, they are limited. Uh, they have limited or no extended family. Um, they have to take care of themselves in their later years. Um, they may or may not have been married. They may have lost a spouse. They may have no children or they may have estranged children. Um, so that's kind of a definition of a solo ager. I'm gonna give you two bits of information for solo agers because we deal with a lot of solo agers in our industry. I have a lot of people fit at home clients who are solo agers and I'm, I learned a lot from solo agers. Um, Solo agers are very smart. They have the resources because they didn't have kids who drained their bank accounts and they, um, they want to live their lives the way they want to live their lives. So what do they need to do? Right? So your, your friend, right? Your friend in the back who, who her friends have all passed away, right? People are living so long that now they don't have um, people around them, which is a lonely really a lonely um, time <clears throat> to get a chair. And I'm going to keep touting the, the, the care manager role, right? We have a care manager role in, in our group. Care managers, I will think of a care manager as the, um, the conductor in an orchestra, right? So we're, we, there is a whole bunch of us here in the senior arena, and we all have a different little piece of it. The care manager is like the conductor, right? They know the aging process. They know the pitfalls. They recognize where people are and they can pull in certain resources. Um, they use these people often. So th they're, they're bringing in people that they trust and, and that they know care about others. Um, align yourself if you're a solo ager with a care manager, have them get to know you. My parents live in Florida half the year. We're beg I, I keep begging them. I want to get a care manager for you in Florida. We don't need one, is what I hear. And I said, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for us. Because if something happens, one of us has to run to Florida and, and help you sort it out. Where you can just meet once a month with a, with a um, care manager. Once a month. They know you. They have all your contact information. They know what your wishes are. And then when you need them, guess who's there for you, right? So, or have a ton of kids because then someone's gonna definitely go to, to help you out. And have a plan, right? Have a plan and have a team. And we're gonna talk about that too. You, you want a team of people around you and this is no matter what type of caregiver you are. You, you want to have a team around you, right? And, and you want to assign roles to those people. Um, somebody's going to be a decision maker. Somebody's going to be um, just a friend who comes over, right? If, if your spouse used to go out um, for coffee every morning and now, you know, with his buddies up at Dunkin' Donuts, and now he's not able to do that, Maybe his buddies are going to come over and have coffee with him. So they would be part of your team. So it's, it's things to enhance our lives. It's things to care for us, to take care of, of us. Um, people want to live, but we don't want to just give people the basic needs that they need, right? We want to give them a good life, right? And, and the way I look at it too is it's, it's a privilege to take, you may not feel like this all the time, but it's a privilege to care for people right? It's a privilege because you get to know them 
in a different way. That's okay. Um, so with the natural aging process, it's part of life, right? I, I heard that every time you take a breath, your body ages, which I wish I never heard that <laughs> because it, it bothers me, but um, we're all aging, right? There are things that we, that I couldn't, I can't swing on a swing anymore with, without getting nauseous, right? My vestibular system just doesn't work like it used to. Um, there are certain things that I can't do and my children pointed out to me frequently. So um, it's, it's part of life, right? And we need, you know, hopefully, I always say I'm going to age gracefully, but I'm going to fight it along the way, all the way, right? Um, so there is natural decline in things that used to be effortless for you that may not be effortless anymore. Um, sometimes it may not be age, but it may be an illness or an injury or a disability, which doesn't allow you to do the things that you need to do. Um, the inability to perform normal functions um, may be one of the earliest signs that your parents are um, in need of help. So Rich is going to continue on, but we collectively thought hard as a group when we were putting this presentation together on what are the warning signs? Like, what are the, the triggers in your mind? Um, and, and I know because I use this for myself. And even though I'm in this arena, I realize my limitations. And I realize that when my father-in-law was sick, we needed a care manager. When, um, you know, th there are certain times, and, and even though I know a lot, these people know more, right? These people in their own collective areas know more than I do. So they will be part of, and they are part of my team. Um, and, 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 and I'm not saying this is the perfect group for you, but just be cognizant of who you would want on your team and what kind of resources that you need. Um, so we decided that the way to help the sandwich generation professional realize that their parents may need assistance or for the caregiver, my husband or my wife may need assistance now because I'm noticing these things. And we've decided to help define what ADLs and IADLs are to help people learn um, what those triggers are and, and when they're care when their loved ones need help. So I will turn it over to Rich for the next few slides. Thanks, Carla. Very good. <laughs> You're a good speaker. <laughs> I sit down and listen to you more. Um, okay, so I'm Rich Walner. Again, I'm a financial planner and advisor, and um, I'm, I'm from North Reading. I'm on the select board there. I've been involved with the Council of Aging for like 20 years. I've worked with UMass Gerontology we did a huge survey in my town. I, I've been really interested in the whole um, senior population and how that works and everything else like that. So in our town, um, we call you um, uh, rising seniors or seniors. And if you're needing help, you're a super senior. So, you know, we try to change the language to make it more positive and it seems to be working. You know, we seem to have a nice thing going on. So when I do financial planning, um, what I do is, you know, as a financial advisor, you know, I have all these people who are telling me it's all about estate planning, it's about taxes, it's about, you know, how to do legacy and everything else like that. But the wild card in everybody's plan is if you have a health issue, if your partner starts to fail. And so when you're, let's say you're married, um, you know, one and one is a partnership that actually equals three because you have synergy between each other. But when you start to so it defies math logic because one and one does equal three. But when one starts to fail, that number changes pretty quickly. And then one minus zero is very hard to achieve. So as we start to fail, that one plus one equals one because certain skills for the husband might not be the same skills that the wife has and vice versa. So together they can be whole. But when we get a little bit further down, that's when things start to really fall apart. So I had never known this before, and some of the experts here are going to uh, feel free to jump in. But IADLs, I, I, I've heard of ADLs before, but I didn't know what IADLs were. And IDLs are defined as instrumental activities of daily living. They're activities to support daily life. 
Um, they are focused on your interaction with your environment. And I, IADLs are more complex than ADLs, means it requires a higher level of cognitive and physical ability to be able to achieve. Carly, can you go to the next one? And you hit the, oh, you got it. Oh, good, you did better than me. Okay, so think about for yourselves. Now, listening to all of you, a lot of you already are probably into the ADLs and not necessarily IADLs, but just for just for the purpose of definition, um, when you start to look to this list, you'll start to recognize that I would consider to be yellow flags. Is so if someone was completely healthy and then they start to devolve, they start to lose capacity. These are some of the warning signs that you would start to see. Things like are they able to care for their pets? Um, are you walking into their homes and seeing moldy food on the counters? Um, are they, um, you know, are they having a hard time even doing meal prep? Um, is shopping becoming a, a real chore for them? Uh, are they starting to forget things? Health maintenance. I mean, you can see all of this. So uh, just in a raise of hands, is this something you've seen with a, yeah, I mean, this is not a big stretch, right? So oftentimes, you know, for like the kids of the parents, we just kind of want to Talk it away. We just want to be like, yeah, well, that happened, but it's not a big deal. You know, let's let it go. And the problem is, is that you start, these start to compound. And as they compound, it starts to have a real effect. And then we're kind of in denial and not dealing with the issue when the people are the most um, flexible to make decisions that are in their own best interest. So that's why IADLs are very important. And again, for most of you, you've already gone through this phase, but this is where um, you know, this is where planning can come into the, into the picture and not just have it be a chaos. Because what happens if we go to ADLs, now we're, we're in crisis mode and we're not in planning mode. So that's what IA deals are about. Okay, next. So ADLs, I think most people know this, are activities of daily living. Um, they're essential for people to, you know, get, we're going to see the examples of them, but they're essential for basic survival and well-being. And their activities are taking care of your own body. So not just in your environment, but taking care of yourself. Okay, probably go to the next one. And so there's actually technically nine ADLs, but the yellow one, the ones in yellow are the more popular ones we're familiar with. But bathing and showering is a challenge. Toileting, toileting hygiene, dressing, eating, swallowing. Um, you know, you have to feed somebody. Um, functional mobility, I can tell you in my town, the two biggest issues, we just did a survey, another survey, 1,500 responses. The number one issue was, was transportation. The second biggest issue was mobility, people getting around. By far, everything else that we saw. And so personal hygiene, even sexual activity <laughs> is part of that. And, uh, you know, having to wear devices, you know, walkers and everything else like that. So again, I think most of you are in the ADL stage. Am I correct when I say that? Right. Okay. So that's where that's where now we're moving from planning options to now we're into crisis options. And for geriatric care managers, also known as um, aging life care professionals, did I get it right? Yeah, that's the new name. Very modern, but geriatric care manager is more descriptive. Um, that's when they really jump in because now we're a little bit beyond planning. We're just trying to take care of the situation at hand. Okay. Make sense. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to have Debbie get up and we have a, you know, just to kind of give an example of this, this real life case study is a way this really happened. It's going to give a brief description, let you know how we kind of interacted and then we're going to come back. Thank you. So again, um, my name is Debbie Amenzadeh. I'm a senior real estate specialist. And um, believe it or not, a lot of the people that I'm working with right now are um, thinking about downsizing at some point, but not quite ready. But my role as a senior real estate specialist is to make sure while they're in their home, um, or perhaps it's someone caring for someone in their home, um, that they're safe and that they have, you know, that I can share resources or ideas about resources that can keep them safe, whether it's home modification, whether it's meals at home um, to make sure that, you know, people are eating nutritious meals, um, whether it's a lifeline. I have a 95-year-old client in a big house on her own in Boxford, no lifeline, and admitted she fell in the garden one day, and I said, well, 
before, you know, while you're not having a lifeline, at least bring your cell phone and have it turned on, you know, wherever you go. So, um, so that those are the folks that I deal with, but I'm going to share with you a real case um, that we worked with. Um, and as Carla mentioned, we had a conductor that sort of plugged in different resources. And there are so many people out there that have limited to no family, no support. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really surprising. But so we were working with a, a couple. Um, and again, the theme of today was is really planning ahead. But um, this became a crisis situation where it was all hands on deck. So um, there's a husband, Joe, um, we changed the names for, you know, um, uh, Joe is 77, Mary is the wife, 85. Um, and Joe had some early dementia um, and was on multiple medications. And um, Mary was on a walker and some trouble getting around. And they were basically in like a rehab setting. Um, she was in a rehab setting and he really couldn't live alone. She was really her, the primary caregiver. So uh, the, the rehab ended up telling her, it's not safe for you to go home. So the two of them they had a townhome they owned, and the two of them needed to quickly get some care management help in a new setting, sell their townhome, and move to assisted living. So, you know, all of that combined and had to kind of orchestrate all of that. Um, you know, when we had, Joe had multiple um, issues, diabetic, um, cognitive impairments, um, incontinence. He had some trouble managing his medications, whether it's like forgetting to take it or, you know, confused. Uh, and one of the roles of a geriatric care manager is advocating for you, um, for with your doctor, talking about as you age, it, you know, do, do they need to be on all of these medications? Could we streamline this? You know, I, again, I had a different 95 year old client, multiple medications, different times of the day, very confusing. So, you know, folks like Holly and, and Northeast Care Management set up timers, set up a schedule talk to the doctor with them. Um, you know, so that's just an example of, of how they help. Uh, so I think we can go to the next one. So, you know, the care manager stepped in, started identifying what are all the needs of this couple. Um, some of it was, you know, the immediate medication help, agency coordination, trying to get them um, placed into an assisted living right away. Um, you know, coordinating their, all their appointments. They actually give them transportation to their appointments. They can't drive. Um, getting advanced directives in place. I'm a big proponent. Again, even though I have a real estate hat on, I'm a big proponent of estate planning, big proponent of healthcare proxies. I've been in an emergency room with one of my clients who didn't have a healthcare proxy. So um, really about, you know, being proactive on this. Shredding of documents, no longer needed. Um, bringing in a, someone like a daily money manager. They had a lot of outstanding bills. They were, they were behind. You know, going through the crisis of their health, um, that was falling behind. Um, going through um, bringing me in to help organize and get their home ready to sell. I mean, literally handing me the key, I took, you know, ownership of bringing in someone that could clear out their home, um, bringing them in to take what they needed out of the home, and then having a cleaner, having a couple of repairs done, a couple of touch up paints to get it ready to sell. So I handled and kind of orchestrated all that. Um, but in that process, we found two things. We found a cruise that they never took during COVID that was going to expire. <laughs> and they, we found a timeshare that they completely forgot about that they owned. So, you know, again, you know, paperwork, documents, kind of keeping on top of that, sorting them out, having them organized in, in a, a proper fashion, um, you know, helping them file for long-term care insurance claims. Um, this stuff is very confusing. So having someone advocating for that. Um, and then at the bottom, as I mentioned, you know, I coordinated the painter, junk dealer. They, it was a last minute electrical issue, of course, <laughs> before my open house. So bringing an electrician in, 
Um, but just handling that so honestly they could just focus on getting better and caring for each other. So that's just a, kind of a glimpse of one, and I'm sure everybody in this room, in our group, could mention other case studies, but just kind of illustrates um, a situation, again, in a crisis mode that, you know, if, if you're sort of proactive, you can have some of this, avoid some of this. So, and then I'm gonna turn it back over to Carla. I, I wanna just piggyback a little bit more on, on this case study um, in, in terms of <clears throat> why I value the members of our group so much. So for daily money managers, right? They're in the home. They come into the home, they work with people. It's another set of eyes. It's another person on your team. They, um, they can see kind of what's happening, see if assistance is needed. Um, and then they can do things like pay the bills. One of the, one of the first indications that there may be issues is people aren't able to write checks anymore, right? They aren't able to just go through that process of, of paying bills. So that's a huge piece of it to have someone trusted that you can, that can help you through that. Um, selling art, right? Se um, selling a car that's no longer needed. Just different things like that. Um, and, and not just taking care of the, you know, paying, make sure that um, the taxes are done and paying the IRS, but other things that, that come up, like getting those rebates from a cruise that they didn't go on or doing something about the timeshare, right? So these are all things that these people, she's not making the decisions. She's carrying out what the loved one wants to happen, right? We know that if, if um, a pharmacy, if your, your insurance company doesn't pay for your meds, they reject it. You can be on the phone all day long and at the end of the day, not even have the med that you need, right? I mean, hours. Try calling Medicare, med right? <laughs> because you have an issue. Try getting in with your doctor when you need to, right? It is a daunting. It's daunting for people who are in their 40s and 50s. But if you have a senior taking care of a senior, it's, it's, it's daunting. Um, so those are some of the issues. What happens when mom says, hey, when you speak to mom and say, hey, um, how, how was dinner last night? What did you have? Oh, I had a can of soup. Well, what does that mean? Does mom typically have a can of soup or is mom not able to cook anymore? Um, did you go to mass today, mom? No, I, I watched it on TV. So you start to notice little things like that that may be a little different. So we want to find out was she just not feeling well and she decided to, to watch mass from her couch or why did she have a can of soup? Because could she not do meal prep for herself, right? Medication is another big one. We, when we go in for people fed at home, <laughs> so many times my therapists come back and say, she's not taking her meds or she's not feeding her dog, right? And um, <laughs> it's tough. It's tough to try and, and get people that type of assistance as well. So that, that's one piece of it. Um, when, you're, when you're selling or you're moving somewhere, right? Where are you going? Right, we have a great Delaney at the Vale locally uh, that uh, ad assisted living, independent living, um, memory care that people can go in and get different kinds of assistance. Right, because I, I know I would want to be in my area. Right, I would want to be local. Um, move management. Right, you, you're going in. You you need to sell your home. Right, it's, it's daunting to think of decluttering a, ho a home that you've lived in for 40, 50 years, right? So that piece of it in terms of, and, and you don't want your stuff to go into a landfill, right? Like you want, you want to take things with you, you want to preserve things that you want, you want your stuff to be utilized by other people. So that whole process and the management of that, the move manager is huge, and then moving it to where you need it and setting it up for you. Those are all services that are available. Uh, in terms of having people come into your home and having home health aides, a lot of people said, I don't want anybody in my house, right? It, 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 it's tough, right? But in it, and it's, it's expensive to live at home, right? And to bring services in, in terms of, you know, making sure people keep balanced. Um, 
you know, we talk about these ADLs to have an occupational therapist. You know, I have occupational therapists who can go in and work with people with this is how you bathe. This is a good spot for a grab bar, um, you know, helping with with feeding um, and then keeping balanced. Right. Strengthening how to get in and out of your favorite chair, how to navigate the stairs. Hey, let's go outside for a walk. So it, it's different things like that. Um, and we talked about care management, definitely financial planning, right? <laughs> we, we also have an attorney um, for estate planning too, um, but financial planning and long-term care, right? <laughs> what does long-term care actually pay for? That's part of the process too, but how do you, how do you um, kind of um, make sure you're taking advantage of those types of things? So... <sighs> Why are sandwich generation caregivers stressed, um, right? <clears throat> so, so you have a, a mom, uh, you know, you have a, a, a sandwich generation professional who's a 40 year old woman who's taking care of her elderly parents and she has to leave work because mom and dad, um, dad didn't take his medications and mom's not sure if he's right. So at the end of the day, or she leaves to work early, goes to see mom and dad, and, and realizes that their med management is a disaster. So she's trying to deal with that. But she also knows she's got kids at home that she's got to feed and get home. And then once everything settles down at night, she realizes that tomorrow in her third grade class, her daughter's third grade class, it's Dr. Seuss day. So her daughter needs to go in dressed up as a Dr. Seuss um, character. Thank you. Um, that's pressure, <laughs> that's stress, because the daughter's looking at her like, what am I going to be? And that's when you really get creative. So it's it's that type of, do you think she has time for herself? No. So it's that type of um, pressure, and it's that type of acknowledgement of what this group of people is going through. So what does it do? It, it costs, it's time, it's money, it's work, right? How does it affect you? <laughs> It affects your personal time, uh, your health and well-being, um, your career development, your family, right? It is, and, and potentially your financial status. Thanks for coming. But, yeah, no worries. Uh, potentially your financial status. If mom and dad don't have the resources and, and your, you and siblings are going to be paying for that, that's a whole new situation, right? So um, there's a lot of juggling that needs to go on. Um, so what do these people suffer from? Burnout, right? Depression, uh, guilt. I wish I could wave my fairy wand and get rid of guilt because it's we are, we are <laughs> no matter who we are, we have too much guilt. I want to wave away the guilt because people just try the best that they can. Isolation. You feel like you're the only one. How many times you look out the window and say, yeah, this one's going for a walk and I, I'm staying in here because I got to make sure this one doesn't fall, right? It's that type of isolation, which is tough. Um, what do you do for yourself? I worry about the caregivers, like I said, and I always check in. You know, when I have somebody walk through this door and, and I'm not a, I, I am not a physical therapist, but when we had a client walk through our doors, husband, um, high level banking person had a major stroke. The wife comes in with him and says, I'm looking for a place for my husband. Okay. And I took him on a tour, had a conversation with him and her. She was not pleasant. She was not happy. And in my feeble little brain, I said, what's going on here? Right. This woman looks like a lovely woman who is petrified for her husband, right? Petrified for her husband. So we have the conversation. We tell people what we can do for them. We take a tour of the facility. By the time I get her into the ladies room, because the husband goes into the men's room, she smiles for the first time. And I said, you're smiling for the very first time. And she said, you guys seem like the place for me, but I, I need to take care of him. And I said, promise me that once he's settled, you come and exercise too, because it's, you can't go down because if you go down, guess how many ambulances they're calling to, 
right? I've had clients like that. Two ambulances they call. Um, so it, you really, as caregivers, you got to have your team. You have to have people that you can call on. You have to take care of yourself. And that's with no guilt, um, but that's with help. Um, that That is like a big, huge piece for me. So the stress in terms of like having a career, if you're spending that money to take care of your parents, um, you know, what are you doing? Are you going to be their caregiver? Are you going to quit work? Or are you going to use your paycheck to take care of them? So when you get on the other side of this, you still have a career. So these are real personal um, and they need to be thoughtful conversations that we have, but it's reality, right? I guess we're fortunate enough that hopefully we have the resources. We are, we, we live in a, you know, in, in, in the United States. So there are a lot of resources out there for us. And I know this seems, I, I don't want it to be so gloom and doom. There is hope. Um, there is hope with getting the resources and understanding what's out there. So we have some handouts for you that we have here that we hope can help you um, having that conversations. We have, are you feeling luck? If you're feeling lucky, go to Vegas. If not, everyone else needs a plan. So we have a handout to help with those positive conversations to have with loved ones. It's hard as a kid to have this conversation with your parents, right? It's, it's tough. Um, and, and people live their lives the way they want to. We need to know how to support them to live their lives the way they want to. Nobody's trying to take control. And I, you know, I've had this, we've had these conversations with my parents. We all sat down with my parents. We lost my father-in-law and it was kind of a disaster situation. And so we met, all of us met. My parents had us over for dinner and we talked. What do you guys want? We'll support you, but we need to know. And they went through and my mother had, different things that she wanted. And my dad had different things that he wanted, but we had that conversation, which is huge. And the, the best thing you can do for your children is to have a plan. So they're not making those decisions for you. I think that is like the biggest gift you can give your, give your kids. I create a team. So this is the, this is the positive note, create a team, right? Um, have people there, whether they're family members, friends, people that you bring on board, um, to help you and to help your loved one. So that is, um, we, and we also have um, a checklist. If you, if somebody has to go to the hospital, we have a checklist of stuff we recommend that, that you bring. Um, get your financials in, in place, get your, um, get your legal documents in place because it just makes things easier. And then you know what your financial situation is as well, which is so important. Takeaways. What did we learn today? Hopefully something, um, hopefully we got you to that next step, right? Um, you have to be an expert in so many areas to care for your parents. Um, we wrote local knowledge matters, right? You, anybody can do a Google search, but um, you don't know what you're getting. You want people who know the industry, who know the area and know what resources are available. Um, what kind of time do you want to spend with your, with your parents, right? Or your loved ones, bring in people to do the things you don't want to do. Right. <laughs> and, and be able to enjoy your loved one. Right. Um, you, you know, I'll, I'll end it there. <laughs> there are certain things that I don't want to have to do for my parents. I will, if I have to, but I'd rather be able to sit and have a conversation with them or have lunch with them um, than have to bathe them or something like that. So just kind of go through that process in your head. Um, that planning will help you and um, not get you into that point where you are um, in crisis mode. And then this whole thing, is it worth giving up your career? So um, that's for the sandwich generation person. And we'll turn it back to Rich. Okay, so I'm gonna conclude. Um, so, uh, so just to kind of step back, the Senior Resource Council is really devoted to providing a local resource of all the 360 degrees of professionals you might need to help you make um, good choices and decisions for your loved one. Um, and for all the caretakers out here, you're all under stress, get it. 
I totally understand it. It's it's hard to do. It's um it's costing you energy as well to do that. It's it's a it's a noble cause, but it's also as just same as the when you get on a plane, you know, when they say the mask comes down, do you put it on the person next to you, take care of yourself first. You're no good to anybody if you pass out. So you have to take care of yourself first and then you can take care of others around you. If you do in the opposite order, it's a disaster. It's the same thing right here. So the whole point of the Senior Resource Council is to provide a resource, a local resource for you so that you can find the information you're looking for. And the professionals we talked about are all dedicated to representing their industry. Meaning if we talk about assisted living, Diane Robinson here, um, she's not just representing her at the place she works, she's representing all of the assisted living uh, facilities that are in the area. Um, same for the aging care life manager. They're, they know it, geographically there may be better choices about who to bring in. So we're all dedicated. It's a very core value of ours. It's not about uh, generating business. It's about providing good information for the people that need it. Okay. Um, and everybody's been, by the way, everybody's been vetted. You don't come into our group without going through a process. We, we are very careful about who we bring in because we're really dedicated to that cause. You can go to the next one. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And these are all the different professionals that we've already mentioned a number of them. I'm just wondering who we left out. Skilled nursing. Um, we didn't talk about hospice palliative care. Um, estate planner. We have an estate planner who couldn't be here tonight. And... Um, and uh, memory care. We have a memory care specialty as well. So again, 360 degrees of anything you might need along the way. Okay. A place for mom, by the way, I always have to mention this, a place for mom does not provide you the information you're looking for. It is totally about advertising dollars. It has nothing to do with finding the best assist assisted living place for you. Uh, for example, the assisted living range, I, I like to point this out because I experienced this with my mother-in-law when we went looking for this before I had this group, um, there was some assisted living that are beautiful when you walk in there. They look great, food's great, but the care is really poor because the staff turnover is so much that you don't know who's there. And there's other assisted living places where they take care of their staff. It may not be beautiful when you walk in, but nobody really cares about them. They care about the staff that goes to take care of you. That's where the quality is. The only way you know that is to know the insides of what's going on with these facilities. In my mother-in-law's case, we found one place where they did a really good job. And when she passed, the, care, the people that were taking care of her took time off from their own lives to come to the funeral and say goodbye. You don't get that, you know, just that's not an arbitrary thing. That's on purpose. Okay, so how can we help you, right? Here's, here's two things. If you are in a crisis, right? So you, you're in the ADLs and it's already happening. Um, we have a, 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 a um, it's hard to see here, but you'll get in our brochures up there. You know, there is a, a Gmail address for you to contact us and we can give you referrals to whoever you may need at the moment. And we try to help you sort that out. And again, no matter who it comes in from, you know, if you go through uh, Debbie or you go through Carla or you go through myself, we're going to find the professionals for you. And our referral list is more than just us. It's bigger and depending on what's going on. But we don't encourage crisis. We encourage planning. And so the second part that we offer is we offer an SRC care consultation. And what we do is we open up once a month a one-hour session for people to come in and to tell us what's going on in their lives. And like in a roundtable, we hear what's going on. And we're able to share with you some advice about how to do the planning, how to prepare for what's coming. And we're happy to do that. It's um, something you have to sign up for. We have to, you know, we have to find out what what your situation is. We kind of vet you before we get started, but then we bring in the people you need to talk to that, frankly, you could never get in any other situation. Um, and that's what's unique about our group is that for free, um, is that we offer that, you know, for select people to be able to do that. And it's a way for you to get local, regional, high expert information on your situation. And we do that once a month and we're happy to do that. So that's the let's make a plan. That's when you're in IADLs is the best time to do that. But even if you're in ADLs, we can also help you out as well. Okay, that, that's it. Yeah, okay. So questions is, would be great to have right now.
sorry, for the consultation to to hear your situation and to discuss your situation with the many of the people that are in this room. That is free. We do that once a month, one hour for whoever wants to apply for it. And you can go on our website and there's an application right there. Just go ahead and fill that out. You'll be talking to me afterwards because I'll be helping sort out what your case is about. And then I bring in the right people and then we have a good open discussion. Yeah. Yeah. We're really dedicated to this, you know, really helping people out. Other situations or anything? Yes, please in the back. Who wants to answer that? <laughs> this is Trisha Gordon. Yes. So what a home help aid does is help people stay in their homes, meaning that um, if people can't shower for themselves, the home health aid would do the showering, could do a little cooking, could do a little cleaning, um, helping people stay at home for as long as possible. Because the fact of the matter is most people who are home, the, um, the, the risk for falling is huge. And you don't want to fall when you're older. Um, you just don't because it, it creates so many other issues. So a home health aide could help with that too. We can collaborate with PT, OT, and skilled nursing to keep the person at home as well. So it's, it's a home health aide or a, um, a certified nursing assistant. They're, they're kind of one in the same. The certified nursing assistant usually works in a um, nursing home type with a group of people that they have. Home health aides are usually people who come into your home and just work one-on-one -on -one with a particular person in their home. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, um, this is nationally. Uh, the world wants the, the your loved one to stay at home as long as they possibly can. So, having you know someone who can even assess your home for like dangerous, like you know, throw rugs and things like that is really important to make it a safe space. So, true story. I I for one time with a one couple in North Reading, I played daily money manager role. And I was going to their home on a regular basis, opening up their mail. And when I came there one morning, his wife, who's also suffering from dementia, waved me in. And there is the husband caught out of his bed between the book, the, between the nightstand and his bed. And his head was caught in the book. And I have no idea how long he had been there for. But, you know, he was a nice guy. And he said, yeah, you should see the other guy. And that was funny. But it was also startling to me that this has been happening and I had no idea how long he had been there. And it's because he had a throw rug in each of them. You know, so simple things really make a huge difference. So preventive measures goes a long ways to having a successful outcome. Because last thing you want to do is have your loved one go to a nursing home. That's, nobody wants to be there. It's, it's not a good place to be if you don't have to be there. Wanted to throw up the distinction between um, long term care or a nursing home and senior living communities. A lot of people make that choice when they're well, when they're, it's not a crisis. What happens is communities like any senior living community, they provide restaurant quality meals, they do the housekeeping, they do those things that right now you're doing as chores. If you're taking advantage of the lifestyle part of senior living, then those chores now become choices. You like to do laundry? Do your laundry. I don't. I would move just to have someone do my laundry. But I just wanted to make that distinction that it, it is oftentimes a lifestyle choice for the conveniences, for the supportive services that are in place prior to needing long-term care or a nursing home. I just wanted to make that distinction. Does that make sense? We're, thank you for coming. We're here. If anybody has questions, um, we're going to stick around for a little bit, but we appreciate you coming and we have a ton of resources here. Feel free to take what you want. We do have one specific, um, we have a, a flyer for this group and then we have all of our individual stuff. 